Tesla's energy storage business is uh, big and it's getting bigger. We were warned years ago that it could be even bigger than the automotive side of things. And perhaps it is. There are some things we have recently learned and some things on the horizon. We're going to get into all that. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. Joined here, as I so often am, by my good buddy Herbert from Brighter. He's the the go-to guy to get all kinds of uh, wisdom and knowledge. And I appreciate hey, you being here so much. <laughs> Roger that, Niner Niner. Okay, so uh, you may have heard the good news. Tesla Energy Storage was the highest, uh, was a highlight of its blowout earnings. And Elon says it's growing like wildfire. 52% year-over-year growth, earning over $7 billion in revenues so far in 2024. This is big, man. This could be... Uh, this could be huge. Maybe not as big as RoboTax or Optimus, but this is here today. Company reported uh, huge earnings, 2.4 billion in the third quarter, up from up by 52 percent. At where automotive was up, but just barely. That means it's nearly 10 percent of Tesla's total revenue. That's a big deal, would you say? What do you What are your thoughts oh, yeah. on uh, on that? Yeah. That's the, that's the magic number. It needed to be over 10 percent for anybody to even consider it to be a, you know a significant. Um, line of business. It's the growth though, right? That that's the thing we're waiting for. Uh, the 30% gross margin is ahead of schedule of what people said. Now, I completely understand. I've been having long conversations with both Matt Smith and, and Larry Goldberg, one of the best retail analysts who do deep dives on energy. And what they've explained, of course, is that after the first sale uh, to a utility or to a country or wherever they're selling it to, um, that first sale, it does take time for them to implement, install it, and only after it's actually powered could you then start to recognize the revenue. And so there's lumpy, right? We saw the first quarter of the third quarter. We saw that it jumped in sales, and it's only this this next quarter. That's when we actually saw the margins uh, show up. So is this going to continue? Um, all uh -huh. signs point to yes. We we continue. like I, We don't even report it because it's so regular now. One of these, you know, large utilities, massive deals, a couple hundred million, five hundred million dollar worth of deals being happening. We just like that's a pretty big deal, but we don't talk about it because we it's don't. Just so we don't talk about now. it. But let's talk about it. Tesla <laughs> Energy already <laughs> exceeded last year's numbers, and yeah. there's still a quarter left. Six point nine gigawatt hours uh, put out. Uh, and this is only, I mean, this is, this is huge. And uh, we've got more because that's what I do here, man. The U.S. grid has added over 20 gigawatts of battery storage since 2020. The equivalent of what 20 nuclear power plants can produce. Sort of, I mean, you're mixing time with output. That's not the important part. But if we go on to here, because remember, like you just said, there are you can count some of it when it ships, some of it when it's put in place, but you can't count all of it until it's electrified. Tesla Megapacks power on at Western Australia's largest battery yet. Mm -hmm. This is quite big. Uh, they uh, turned on the stage one, uh, sporting 219 megawatts slash 877 megawatt hours. Uh, this is huge. This is a uh, it's a over two gigawatts of projects in the pipeline in Western Australia, and it's just getting bigger. Now, do you know who else? I mean, is there anyone else even competing in this space? Do you know? Oh, I was going to ask you that question. I mean, there's lots of competitors, right? But the key differentiator is not just the battery packs, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously creating these batteries. Uh, they're easy to do. They're not that hard. Um they, they are not rocket science, yeah. Compared to an auto business, of course. But it's the software. It's at the auto bidder. It's the management, that the AI management of this. It's the implementation and an integration. It's the partnership, the long-term partnership you're going to have with a company. You don't want them to go under. You want to have, you know, really responsive. And we know that Tesla's ahead. So, you know, it doesn't matter, honestly, if there's competitors. There is lots of Chinese companies, lots of other companies because the the demand for energy is just so high and it's accelerating so much that the market is expanding it's like it's like a supply constraint you can have 10 other competitors and you would not be able to meet the demand that's out there especially when data centers need so much of this already Elon continues to say that just in a couple of years from now they're all all these data centers are going to be energy constrained so 
I'm sorry. Did you say something about uh, the energy demand growing f going mm. forward? Because <laughs> I happen to have a chart about that very thing. Perfect. Let's see if we can make it look any good here. Here we are in 2024, and you can see even by Bloomberg Neff's uh, yeah. conservative figures, it's still growing massively. The colors indicate the countries with the red being China and the blue being US. I think US has more demand than that. It just isn't quite realized. Worth noting, XAI just took delivery of some mega packs not because they need the energy, but because they need the smoothing. There are irregularities from the grid that introduce millisecond level errors, which the GPUs are sensitive to. So they use it just as a, a universal power supply, a buffer between the grid and the chips to make it smoother. That's a use case we weren't even thinking about. Now, when we no. talk competition, uh, you, you may know that LG makes makes these. Uh, how can you compete with LG? They are the company that already makes the batteries. You've also got BYD who makes them. They're the battery company, the cell maker. They've got it all and they got it all in house. Uh, one of the larger players, Samsung, they make them as well. And uh, one I hadn't heard of, but who was at least up through 2020, the largest in the world, uh, ABB. Yeah. Mm. Um, and they are huge. So then uh, if we share this, we'll see this is a pretty out of date, but this is from 2020. ABB was at number one, mm -hmm. Samsung at number two, BYD all the way down here, Tesla way down here. Well, we can imagine how this has changed over yeah. these last this four is, years. This is 2020. Yeah. Yeah. This is out, out of date. This is just showing who some of the players are. So why would, with all of those opportunities out there, how is it that Tesla is able to compete? How can they, how can they beat BYD and LG and all those others who had an early leg up? And I think you just touched on it. Say it again. I don't know. <laughs> you said it, I you said know. this It's the software. It's better. Yeah, yeah. And here's, and here's what we found out. This is from October 18th. Uh, this is Tesla mega pack is the yeah. only one yeah. that is triple a rated. Everybody no, else's systems but are no, that's, pretty good. Isn't tri AAA rated means uh, it's not going to go down under in terms of its, uh, uh, you know, you want to invest. If, if you partner with a battery company to install mega packs in your country and your utility, this is a 20, 10 year, 20 year partnership. You don't want these companies to go down. And that's what this is. Yeah. Ratings. Report deploys a rigorous methodology derived from years of experience, examining factors such as capacity, innovation, market presence, and it uh, assesses the risk. So this is the highest rated company. Now you may recall, I had an opportunity to visit with a, a power plant uh, provider, uh, with a power plant engineer who, uh, attended a presentation where they were discussing stationary storage. And they said, well, we can't do it because we would have to fill this entire valley with mega packs. And the, and the response was, no, 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 that's not the objective. You've misunderstood the assignment entirely. It's to cover peak shaving and all that. And the conclusion of the report was batteries don't work. They're just not reliable. You can't count on them. Asterisk. It's like, what's, what's the asterisk? Oh, except Tesla. Well, lead with yes. that. That's that what could, you got to lead yeah, with. That's, that's true, right? Whenever you hear about superchargers are, are poor, the reason people aren't buying electric vehicles is because of superchargers. Well, it's not superchargers. It's not Tesla superchargers. It's the charging stations from all the other companies that are just unreliable. Tesla has no issues with that. Same thing with these, um, these battery packs. When I... Um needed to use a supercharger recently, I pulled up and thought how quaint it is that other people who have to use other chargers can't just pull up and charge. They have to endure the stress of, is it going to work and how yeah. long is it going to take? I pulled up, I charged and I left. And that's the Tesla difference. Will from Tesla Jigsaw interviewed me for his channel this weekend. And he asked if you couldn't buy a Tesla for some reason, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just not, you can't do it. What would you buy? I and I had to say, yeah, Go well, uh, I said, I've driven so many of them. They all make good drivers, but I don't like driving. I want the car to do a lot of the work. I'd have to do a lot of research to find out who has the second best driver assistance. And then I'd, I'd have to pick somebody that's already doing native knacks that can already use as much yeah. of the supercharger network that's as possible because it's, because they're just so far out ahead. 
Uh, so uh, just finishing up on this, the ratings and what it means, uh, it means that Tesla is at the pinnacle of the battery storage market. The coveted rating is not just a testament to the quality and reliability, but also reflects the company's robust supply chain and innovative prowess. So this is a big deal. How much bigger, and I know you've talked to a number of people about this, how much bigger do you expect stationary storage for Tesla to get over the next year and a half as Shanghai comes online. Yeah, this is, uh, as, so as as you know, Brian Wang did a research and he showed that the mega pack factory in China, first of all, they're ahead of schedule. <laughs> so uh, uh, Grace Tao just announced a few days ago, she's the vice president in China, that uh, Tesla's energy division, energy, the, the mega pack factory there is going to now ship to customers in the first quarter of next year. And the earnings call, they used the word ship. In a previous earnings call, they had called it um, the, uh, produced. The first ones will be produced. So they're ahead of schedule. They're well past the 60% mark, uh, number one. And then Brian Wang's analysis showed that Giga Shanghai, Megapack Factory Shanghai, is three times larger than their Lathro factory. Now we know that the Lathro factory is at scale now. It's at uh, 40 gigawatt hours. There's Pretty high belief here that the Megapack factory, they, they haven't really said anything, but it could be at the minimum the same as Lathrop, but more likely it could be double or triple that. And in fact, some people are saying that Lathrop factory, they're not stopping at 40. It's going to be even more than that. So I think that in the next year or two, uh, we're, we're talking 90 gigawatt hours, I think is the, uh, the estimate that will be at already, you know, because it's going to go up to scale really quickly. There's high belief that at this point they're going to announce a new mega pack factory or they'll just expand Shanghai Giga Factory to double or triple that, right? Um, and then the thing that uh, it just it just boggles my mind is many of the estimates for the energy business for Tesla. It's going to be the same amount of <laughs> revenue we're getting now from the auto business in just a few years. So it's like people are so concerned about the growth rate of the auto business. And then they're going, yes, it's 10, Tesla Energy is 10% of the total revenue today. But in just three, I don't know what the actual number is, three, four years from now, we're going to be the same as what we're making now. On the auto. overhead is so much less in the mega packs. They, they're churning just from the one factory, 7 billion already this year. And they have literally hundreds of employees. Wait. That's good numbers. That's fantastic. I think the last time I talked to Brian Wang, we agreed that it wasn't quite three right. three times the size, but to double the output of uh, of Lathrop would not be difficult for them uh, because it is a slightly newer factory. It is more purpose built. My only concern for Lathrop is if the uh, battery import tariffs remain astronomically high, um, it could create delays as LFP supplies are brought online domestically, but the margin is there. If they need to increase the price, they need to increase the price. That's just beyond their control. That gets passed all the way to the consumer as tariffs often do, always do. Uh, so guys, uh, uh, in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? How excited are you about mega packs? And I mean, it's the most boring thing there is, but it's so exciting when you just look at the sheer numbers of it, uh, head on over to brighter, see what Herbert's up to and everybody else stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when your power doesn't go out.